scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. It is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me please listen carefully i have had the opportunity to be at several funerals i've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people i knew were once alive now dead at that point brothers and sisters please look at me whether you have a phd listen please whether you had a first class are we together no matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life i don't care what you have done i don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive So if I give somebody school fees, that's good. He's going to school. If you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus, and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away hmm. there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes 
as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don moen song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen every time there is a bereavement they send me text messages and I get a text message oh apostle so 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 has died and you know the first thing that comes to my heart most times over 90% of the people send me a text and say apostle I know if you speak a word he will come back to life frankly speaking I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen 
as it is knowing that this person died in Christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics where are you going to die in an aircraft the only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be die in Christ it's not that you die in what you can die in worry is still hell you can die in stress is still hell please hear what I am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the Bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the Bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in Christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind I'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place is your father born again if you hear right now look at me listen wherever your father is if you hear right now that he drops dead will you rejoice will you cry in joy or will you cry in grief if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your roommate what of you because there are people who will never take this thing seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for God does not mean you are saved that you have a Christian name Joshua Jesus our salvation no 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 As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning, look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again. And God granted her grace. I think her younger brother also got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, he will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel 
And she said, look, her whole family had been saved. Do you know, when he was saved, his family members had to drive to his place. And they say, which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to Jesus? If his finances, we can sort it out. And the man got saved under living faith. So that, 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 that fire has come to stay. The joy of salvation. When we give testimonies and we say, praise the Lord. I built a house. Somebody just built a house and it dashed me. We stand up, we roll on the ground. But when we say, praise the Lord, someone God saved, we just clap and hey, please go and sit down. Because of our priority, our priority. I've seen a few people that have trusted God to be saved, get saved, and I've been surprised at the joy, the joy that filled my heart. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? Not needs to be saved. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? There are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation. And you're not doing anything about it. I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting, go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors. This is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies. This is not the work of men and women of God. This is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer. It's just that we are not taught that when you are saved, we teach people about their rights in Christ. But we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ. The only reason you have rights is for responsibilities. You cannot be taught about your right in Christ. The inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is. With every privilege comes responsibility. Every privilege. There's no privilege that does not come with responsibility. If I buy you a car, then you start maintaining it. You come to me to maintain the car, I return it back because it means you are not qualified. It's a privilege, but I, I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it. Is that true? When God gives you an anointing, he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it. That's the responsibility that comes with that privilege. If you love privileges without responsibility, then you are an irresponsible person. So we have a threefold participation. The first dimension or the first participation, the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession. Write it down. The first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer. There's no, you, it's not something you go and wait for an ATM. No, the grace is there once you are alive and you are in Christ. The ministry of what? Warfare 
and intercession. Why do we have to pray? So that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel. We are going to look at a number of scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4, please. Verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 to 4. And then you give us 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 16, verse 9. The ministry of warfare and intercession. Look up, please. We are going to read a lot of scriptures. We have to be very fast. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? So, as obvious as these truths are, when somebody is not in Christ, it's not as easy as you think it is. There, is. there are lots of things you can believe now because the Spirit of God is in you to help you believe. How you know it was the Spirit of God is because you criticize this before. You criticize praying in tongues. You criticize a lot of things, but now you have embraced it. It's by the Spirit. It's not just by growth and maturity, physically speaking. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Aha, uh -huh, next verse. Verse 4, please. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Are you seeing why they believe not? Because although they are looking at you, their minds, their spirits are blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, you can see that man. The moment you leave Koinonia, he looks at you and says, Now, what, what, what kind of thing are you doing? You sing for over, over 30 minutes. Are you the only one? I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go? Don't just insult them. There is something that is making that happen. When they say, Shout Jesus or do this, and you are doing, and somebody's watching and say, ah, How can responsible people behave like this? There is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non effect to people who are not in Christ. That's what necessitates the ministry of intercession. If your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God, don't hate them, don't fight. There is a spirit, listen, there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth. So you can see someone who is a smoker. You will sit down and talk to him. While you are talking to him, the guy will say, Kai, this will be the last cigarette. And you are watching him. You are even encouraged. Then you rub his back and say, you are a good boy. Two weeks later, you check his pocket and it's not just one. You will see a packet. Because there is a spirit. Listen, counseling never saves people. You don't counsel people into salvation. That encounter with the seed of the word of God that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing. We have little respect for it. If someone falls under the anointing, it has a physical manifestation. And so we say, wow, great power was on him. But when someone gets born again, most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough. The ministry of warfare and intercession. Have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again, is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities. Have you noticed that? The moment you finish praying, that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother. It's not normal. There are spirits. They respond. Just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree. So you finish praying. You just rounded up three days fasting. As you are rounding it up, there is war. All of a sudden, your food becomes salty. Madam, you are in trouble. No, there is a spirit. Look, men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them. This body is a, is a dumb terminal. This body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it. You have to know this about people. So that you can learn to love people. This is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people. It's difficult to love people based on the way they behave. You have to look beyond that. You have to access an information that is more than that. So if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you. And you look at him and say I will kill you. You are fighting in the flesh. There is a spirit. No sane person will do that. 
when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get thee behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Because he will come and do the same to them. Demons speak to men. They don't have to be under the influence of, or, 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 under, under the anointing. There are many people saying nonsense. You know it's a spirit that is speaking. There's a way you see men talk. You know that's not them. An interchange between them and another spirit. The same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking. It is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him. So you have to pray. When you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that, you can return with casualties. You must pray. Challenge those spirits. That's what we do in Koinonia. Before every service, the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry through god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about this get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you You've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray 
Lord, I'm coming for koinonia. I know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to CGC. There are all kinds of things like their phone missing, like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them. So we pray. We silence those spirits. And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia in answer to that prayer. The Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to faith. Let me tell you, listen there are many of our loved ones I guarantee you, from now to December, if you will pray for them, you will be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you, but one day God will take them to one meeting where one man of God is and before you know it, the power of God will carry them in that meeting, the next thing you will just hear, they will tell you I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm two weeks old praying in tongues Everybody say, I will pray. Say, I will intercede. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are not discussions. Listen, warfare prayers are not prayers of petition. Right? We have a teaching like that, hopefully next year on prayer, a series on prayer. There is a difference between supplication. There's a difference between petition. Warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. These are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in Christ over people, over territories. When we talk of warfare and intercession, that's not the, that's one of the reasons. Listen, listen, hold on. That's one of the reasons why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not just for you to feel anointed. It's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare. Intense warfare. Do you know? Let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here. You are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Am. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible, I will show you where this is. The Bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer. The tongues is directing it, but your mind is like you keep a picture. So I'm praying for my family. That's what is on my mind. As I'm praying in tongues, I know that these tongues is not for edification of my spirit. These tongues is for warfare to that end. Yeah, that's how to pray. That's how to pray fire that produces results. You lock yourself off your phone. That's not the time to be pinging and praying. You are not serious. You pray with your heart. See, let me tell you, I believe in corporate prayer, but I believe in personal prayer. There are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone. Hmm. There is a way you can be praying with somebody. At a point, the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid. You too, you will feel guilty and say, oh yeah, let's round up. Father, we give you all the glory. Has God finished with you? Listen, when you are praying, the Holy Spirit is not there as a tenant. He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. 
you don't choose how long you just want to pray you stay there till you command victory i tell you if you if that is established in the realm of the spirit you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit that's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you unfortunately it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager i've had you the next thing the guy said can i take one week uh, break i just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and he, all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbal is there he's bathing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbal is to say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit. All this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble. Will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Shakata balataka. Rakata preskadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity. It's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Skapata kata likatosh. Enkre to kata lava kata. Seke teke 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 te. Reko to koto pa kata lava. Mata pras kata. Oh yes, I am victorious. Te poto shola ba 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 ba. Every unsaved person will tear down those walls. We command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord. We command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 mm. Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. 
it looks short in the physical but in the spirit the distance is far it will take prayer to shorten it clear those forces off hmm. see let me tell you there is a way the devil can know you your voice the same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice yeah you can be known hmm. because you are, you are a frequent uh, in a in, in network there are those there, there are frequent programs Th those you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it and then you sleep again Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobadaka. Pray. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up. Eh? Before you, as you are waking up, the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there. I know it looks like I'm sounding silly. But this is how victories are commanded. So you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically. So you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. Any church, listen, there are three departments. Now every department is important, especially in Koinonia. But hear me, I'm speaking to pastors. There are three departments in any church and any ministry. If the devil wants to destroy that ministry, there are three departments. Number one, the ministerial team. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. One, the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them one verse five okay 
it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall ye also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead look at what they went through verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us last verse 11 ye also helping together how that's why we were victorious ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of god there were times we were about facing death but ye also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 it says for i know i wish we could read from 14 it says for i know that this shall turn to my word how through your I know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ next scripture Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who pray Jesus to come and are the prophetess. There are people who pray the purposes of God to find expression. Hmm. Let me give you two more scriptures. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. And then we'll look at 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5. Quickly please. Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first Timothy 2 1 to 5 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty 
3 reading down to 5 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our Savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in God's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one God there is one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus he desires that that man Christ Jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that God will save them the second way you participate in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning Matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures Matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at 2nd Timothy 4 verse 5 thank you Jesus God is helping us Matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no he says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i'd like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Nine, we're reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him 
whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and Simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word I will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost Listen, there are men and women 
and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please pastor alpha come and give 10,000 pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practice in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that when you read Acts chapter 4 don't turn there just write it down Acts chapter 4 32 to 37 the Bible says how that the early church they had a culture the Bible says there were people who sold their lands there are people who sold certain things and brought the resources it said none lacked among them there was such flow of supplies there was such flow of benevolence because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you 
when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can i sit down i'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of god no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david Biome. is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you i want I'm, I'm not saying this i want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts i cannot give god it's not pride is the truth i will be wicked how much do i spend on eating please talk to me how much do i spend on eating if i'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and i'm giving god offering of of 20 kobo am i stupid won't i sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of god make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the god of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man dr paul and gave the story one time i think he asked god to grant him grace he wanted to set up he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel and god answered his prayers and he set up the business in in hundreds of millions do you know 100 percentage me 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man i show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we are going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture matthew 27 please matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir we remember 
that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulcher sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse four for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb i'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you verse eight now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him 10 then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taken counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear oh they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in hausa and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati he's paying musicians satan is still paying men to say jesus is not alive 
but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we'll shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum. somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that there were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance god's business and watch him defend you god will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of god or a man of god and just go and drop it there i'm giving you a big secret you have silent i don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances. Make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose. Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision i don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when 
I looked at it, it was no longer a tree. I saw a big, the only way I can, you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan, right? That looks like a sea creature, like, um, like a dinosaur, these kinds of creatures. Now, I saw it like that. It was a huge, the eyes, one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head. Two, red eyes, angry. The tail was, and not, it was like a snake connected to it. The tail was another creature and had its own life by itself. And the creature was looking at me. I was looking at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it told me. It says, so you think you can release financial blessings for God's people. Something like that. And that was it. I know these spirits. They know me. I've seen them. That's why he will not give you the job. Because God already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen, I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is, there is a rising church I guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here I know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom I know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 I woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and I had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take? You hear that they are, they are putting a... There was a time Benny Hinn was looking for over... I think he spends about a million dollars per week. That's his budget. A million dollars. About 450 million naira of Nigerian currency. On crusades and souls. Are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls? No, it's worth it, brothers and sisters. It's worth it. It's worth it. For as long as I live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250,000. and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes here, i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on on, on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, I think some of the in the, the the IDP camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it David was a man who loved God he sat down one day and said how can I be in a palace 
and there is no house for God. He said, Lord, I know that you inhabit the heavens. You don't need a physical building. However, I cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you. I will arise and build a house for you. God said, you have shed too much blood. I won't allow you. He said, no problem. I'm still not offended. I will gather the money. Let my son build it. There are men and women who will do that. There are men and women who will stand up and override budgets. Some of you, God will empower you by January. You come and say, how much is the budget for bus transport? From January till December. Just this is it. Just take it. See, creed. Nothing kills creed like giving in the house of God. The cure for greed is not counseling. The cure for greed is not saving. The cure for greed is not doing business. The cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources. If you perish, you perish. I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing No, Don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. You know who a treasurer is? The money is not your own, but you pass it around. There will always be a portion for you, but you pass it around. A distribution channel. May God make someone hear that. Your current love for money will never give you finances. Many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business, investment, all of this. There is a place for that. But let me tell you, all those things are rubbish. When your heart is not, you must have a deal with God. It's a covenant. Let me show you a scripture. Psalm 122. We're rounding up. Psalm 122 verse 9. Give us an NIV please. Psalm 122 verse 9. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, media? Okay, please just turn it so that we hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers it's finite it's finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increase it there is he that withholding more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10. How then, I'm rounding up now, shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? So you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off. And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear 
without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank god for the means and the capacity please just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now there are people outside to pay and we are stranded do you know what will happen to me as anointed as i've preached as much as you have been blessed because of the financial pressure on me i will be forced to do something else after preaching such a powerful message on souls i will now say sam please come out pastor alpha come out and now try to twist your hand because i have a budget to meet there are many men of god we call money mongers they are not money mongers the pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick so when you are blessed you are here seated there's light the sound system is working well everything after service you are going there's security standing everything is paid for you know the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together is because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirits satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed their marriage will represent a continuity of the kingdom of god but the financial wherewithal is not there they love god but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of god they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this it's a cost that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment god did not give you that's an assignment god did not give anyone are you hearing what I'm saying? My father is alive. My mother is alive. By the grace of God, I say it in the open. 
I bless them all the time and every time and they are happy I've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life I've had the privilege of of helping in ways little I have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came I've seen people move from scratch to where God will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing I don't care what you are doing I don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting God's time we are going to pray rise up on your feet victory belongs to him oh, oh your life is changing oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs. Sing it from your heart. Oh, oh, oh. oh. voice in one minute and say Lord for as long as there is breath in my nostrils your kingdom must advance lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray for as long as there is breath in my nostrils I'm a kingdom advancer I'm a kingdom advancer I pledge allegiance I rededicate my life I rededicate my days I rededicate my influence for the advancement of your kingdom. Victory belongs to Jesus. Are you praying? I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering for your kingdom for your glory revelations 11 verse 15 we are praying very quickly. We are rounding up now. Please, I want you to participate in the prayer. Can you help us, media? Is that possible? Quickly, please. Revelations 11, 15. That's the theme of Koinonia. It's part of the core scriptures, the anchor scriptures of this ministry. I want you to read it. One, to read. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, because of us, hold on, because of my giving, because of my going, because of my praying the kingdoms of this world is a prophecy that must happen I become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever because of my seed he shall reign because of my going he shall reign I leave listen the 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 what do they call it when you put on your phone just that thing that comes when you see mine it says a kingdom ambassador promoting God's agenda that is all I live for now if I am not doing that now there is no reason to live believe me the reason why I breathe now is to see the nations call him king of kings and I will do all it takes with the breath I have in life and in death to see that his glory is revealed I want you to pray and say father grace for warfare and intercession for souls grace for warfare and intercession for territories are you praying lift your voice and pray Grace, grace, grace. 
for intercession. Praise for prayer. Praise for intercession. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, the courage and the zeal to talk to people about Jesus, to invite them to the house of the Lord, to follow up their establishment. I receive it. Lift your voice and pray. The harvest is wide. The harvest is wide in Zaria. The harvest is wide in your campuses. The harvest is wide on the streets. The harvest is wide among the old, among the young, among the children. The harvest is wide, but the laborers, intentional laborers are few. Lord, I will not be silent. Lord, I will not be silent. I make my roommates the next project. I make my roommates the next project. I make my colleague in office the next project. I make my father, my mother, the next project of salvation. I will talk to them about Jesus. They will not die and go to hell. The last prayer point. I want you to pray this passionately with all your heart. And say, Father, trust me with the resources of heaven. And I vow that I will be your treasurer on earth. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, pray. Make a covenant with God. Lord, trust me. Supernatural resources. Trust me. With the wealth of the kingdom. Trust me. Prosperity in the kingdom is not an achievement. No. You are trusted. You are trusted. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. A few years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, He said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I want you to pray and say, Lord, the resources to fund your kingdom, pass it through me. Lift your voice and pray. God will answer it, I assure you. The kingdom is tied to it. God will answer it. I'm not talking salary. I'm not talking business. The mystery of divine supply. your hands in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of prayer warfare and supplication the grace that helps men travel for souls travel for territories to be opened receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace right now in the name of Jesus I release it upon you from today fresh grace for prayer in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Every spirit of timidity, every lukewarm spirit that does not make God a priority in your life and doesn't make soul winning a passion, I tear that spirit from your life forever in the name of Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus that beginning from now, if you don't win souls, it will be as if you have not eaten. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Because your heart is tied to funding the agenda of the kingdom. I pray for you. The grace 
that helps men to be wealthy the grace for wealth there is an anointing for it in the name that is above all names I pray for you may that mantle come on you right now I release upon you that grace let your financial life change right now let it change like day and night I prophesy to you wisdom strategy grace to walk in obedience the giving grace grace to love the house of God grace for kingdom investment the giving grace receive it in Jesus name I pray for you finally every delayed harvest from any giving you have given in the house of God but your harvest is being tied down I stand in the name of Jesus and I prophesy to that harvest so that you will have more to give I command it to come to you speedily I command your harvest speedily I command your harvest speedily you're here tonight outside everybody stand please no movement you are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord I tell you mantles are falling this thing worked in the spirit things are falling let's just let God do what he's doing but I'll make an altar call while that is happening there are people receiving grace this last prayer point I prayed struck a chord in the realm of the spirit there are people having things you are only a victim of what you do not have there are things that can come upon your life and change your life like day and night blessing for new dimensions bless him bless him lift your hands and thank him for 2015 oh we bless you thank him for the testimonies thank him for deliverances thank him for breakthroughs thank him for the awesome things he's doing and that which he will do tonight just 15 days into the new year and he's proven himself mighty today is the 16th and we already are recording mighty testimonies of his faithfulness Lord we thank you Malabo shata brada gada baladabos speak to us tonight speak to us tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit hallelujah hallelujah father we bless you we really give you praise as individuals and as a family of faith we thank you for the privilege of 2015 and the confidence that we have we bless you for preservation we thank you for your faithfulness because we can count on you in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we have come we ask that you will do something mighty tonight open our eyes it's a new season bring us into dimensions we never dreamt possible and Lord we pray that what you will do this year will dwarf everything all the years combined we have come with our hearts open and Father we really ask that you help us in the mighty name of Jesus Amen and amen. Good to see us. God bless you. Walk around to 10, 15 people. Just tell them it's good to see you again. Those outside, we are with you. Make sure you participate. 
Aleluya. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. When the Spirit takes over your soul when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit We'll see at chapter 6. Tonight is a prayer meeting. I'll just be opening us up to the prophetic word for the year. First and foremost, I'd like us to understand that one of the things that we fight radically in this place is religion and the traditions of men. We never do things because they are the popular things to be done. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that the giving of prophetic words um, is not just some kind of um, church thing by leaders, you know, to be able to, let's say, our church or our ministry has this and that. No. It's, it's a communication of God's intent for a people and a territory. Hallelujah. To the end that when they understand God's program, and the way he's working. Now, I've had a lot of people in a bid to balance the abuse of prophetic words, have condemned everything and said there's no need for prophetic words. When you understand, you see, that, that is the reason why it is important for us to understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The operation of the kingdom defines the scope of the way God does his things. When you know God and you understand the system of the kingdom, then you will know why certain things are necessary. Praise the Lord. If you try to just copy, you may not be able to communicate the light that comes from that revelation. But when it is born out of a depth of understanding, then you will be able to guide people and they will receive breakthroughs in their lives. Are you following me now? And the Bible says God made many stars. Have you read that in Genesis? Right? And part of the ministry of those stars is that as the constellations over the earth, they are supposed to help men understand signs and seasons. Praise the Lord. Is that all the volume, please? Um, so if you understand that God made constellations to guide us into understanding times and seasons. That should tell you that the program of God is very specific and very seasonal. Are you getting my point? God does not just do anything anytime. No, no, not at all. Although he dwells in the realm of eternity, right? When it comes to operating the principles of his kingdom here on earth he subscribed to times and seasons and so when the prophet will speak to the woman he say according to the time of life hallelujah the bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit when in season so there is a season praise the lord and it is important, one of the many things that happens when a season comes is that the graces, the mantles, the understandings and the, the communications of the spirit that will guide people into walking 
in sync with the program of God for that season is communicated to them. And let me tell you something. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not signs and wonders. You see, the apostolic ministry is a dispensational ministry. The true proof of an apostolic ministry is the ability to, number one, understand seasons. Number two, understand the communications and the revelation that is released to guide men into exploring that season. And then number three, to sustain the utterance in the spirit to interpret those mysteries so that the people of God can both understand, receive, and walk in light of what God is doing. Are you following me now? And so, we must be able to understand. The Bible says, wise men, they looked at the stars and suddenly they found out that one star was bright. And they knew it was not just a coincidence. Are you following me now? And on the strength of that spiritual advantage, they began to explore. And it took them around a the manger. And so prophetic words are not just um, words that must happen January to December. And again, I've had a lot of people talk about January to December and say that it is not, maybe it doesn't make any spiritual sense. You see, when I hear talks like this, I, I don't feel bad for the people that communicate these things. It's only an expression of our deficiency of understanding spiritual things. Because if your journey to explore God starts from the Old Testament, you are lagging behind seriously. Your understanding of God must predate the Old Testament. So that it gives you an opportunity to see the consistency of his character through many dispensations. The word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Are you following me now? And so it means that our dispensation is only in the middle of many dispensations that have gone before us and many to come after us. Is that true? But then the Bible gives us a picture of the consistency of the operation of the kingdom in the midst of these dispensations. For instance, there was a dispensation where the one we call Satan or Lucifer did not exist. Did you know that? Is that true? There was a dispensation where the earth was not a factor. Is that true? When you read the communications of Job, when he invoked God in chapter 38, he said, guard up thy loins as, as, a, as a man and I will demand of thee. He said, where was thou when I founded the earth? Tell me if you know. Were you there when I laid its foundation? When I put the cornerstone? He said, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God rejoiced. So you see that the concept of sons of God is not a New Testament concept. Our understanding about God and the kingdom must predate Genesis 1, predate Old Testament. So that it no longer becomes just an argument between Old Testament and New Testament. You are exploring the consistency of a being that has manipulated things according to his wisdom from infinite dispensations past. The earth, as we know, our dispensation is barely six or seven thousand years. But we carbon date rocks and we see that some are as far as 50,000 years. Is that true? That means there is an old story. And if we do not understand this operation of God, we will find ourselves violating his system. And part of my personal pursuit during my retreat, I was telling the Lord that one of the things that I trust that God will use me to bring to this house is accuracy of alignment. That we will truly gain mastery in the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. And then it will make us to reign truly and experientially. And so the prophetic word is God's program of guidance for for ministries, for territories. It's important for us to understand the language of God. He speaks um, dimensionally. In fact, he acts dimensionally. It is the dimensional character of God that gave birth to his names. All the names of God represent dimensions and they, they also represent progressions of understanding him. So every dispensation is supposed to give God a name and that name represents the scope of their experience with him. The names of God as we know so far represent his dealings and his revelations, the unveilings of himself across many dispensations. 
So while we lean on the strength of those revelations to gain access to who he really is, there is a lot more that he wants to reveal to us. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Before we come to Hosea, blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for light. We thank you for light. Thank you for light. Genesis 1 verse 26 And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion upon over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27 So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them hallelujah Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 please I'm just trying to establish a few things that will lead us to understanding the theme and then we'll pray are we there verse 7 okay it's projected I think many of us can follow as many as possible and the Lord God did what formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul there's something i want to pick out here when the bible says god formed man from the dust of the earth now adam was not just the name of that man hallelujah when the bible says god formed man that the name of that formation itself is adam are you getting my point now now he said god made man from the earth the dust of the earth now there is a mystery there that i want you to understand it doesn't just mean god used clay to make man are you getting what i'm saying because according to ecology as we know right you will not be able to dwell in a system if you cannot relate with that environment is that true so god made the spirit of man but when it comes it, it, it came to forming the body of man. The Bible says God made man, Adam. What, what it meant was that God used the raw materials of the system to fabricate the body of man. Are you getting my point? So that it will grant him the opportunity to be able to relate freely in this realm. The biological components of man, the psychological components of man were created from the materials within his environment. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. So that there is a consistent interaction between the man, Adam, and the environment. And five elements work together to create man. Number one, light. Number two, wind. Number three, water. Number four, earth. Just follow me. What's number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, sound. Please just follow me. I want to establish something. Open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these five elements, as we know, look up, please. They are the five elements that govern the interaction of man and his system. Are you following me now? Light, the earth, the food that we eat comes from where? Is that true? The water we drink, without water, you know that we will die. Meaning there is a relationship between the waters and the body of man. Is that true, please? The light, sunlight as we know. You know that without light there is no life. Is that true? And then sound. Sound. Physics has gone so far to tell us a lot of the implication of sound 
it has been established that we live in a planet that is governed by sound sound hallelujah business people have postulated theories to be able to let us know that your thoughts produce sound that your life produce sound and it takes sound to be able to communicate and all of that you are listening to me upon the strength of sound we all know this just to be physics but i am telling you that all these elements were not of this realm they were imported to help man become compatible just follow me this is the reason why the description of the holy spirit in the bible has been in the similitude of these elements are you getting what i'm saying now and so when the bible says god made man what it means is that in the making of this body called adam these elements are found that's why we drink water is that true that's why we need light to see you cannot see in darkness you need light to see you need sound to hear and do a lot of other things we need the earth to be able to plant our crops mysteries you open the ground and throw a seed and close it and don't supervise it you don't need a remote control something begins to happen that we cannot explain brothers and sisters imagine the mystery of this earth is it living you throw a seed the earth has the resurrection power in it you throw a seed and the bible tells us that that seed dies the earth without prayer brings it back to life i'm showing you the elements of creation without prayer no man can manipulate the earth no matter your fight you cannot be angry with the earth because it is spiritual number two fire or light let's just call it light really but you can put light stroke fire you cannot box light or box fire you cannot monopolize it you cannot do anything it's an entity that is strange it is not scared of anything yet it threatens everything spiritual elements number three water a great mystery great mystery you can't hold it yet it has weight heavier than anything mysteries that surround our world that many of us may never get to really understand and appreciate we see it all the time what is the relationship between your body and water brothers and sisters animals take water plants take water Hallelujah. Meet a man who is dying of thirst. Give him water and he's rejuvenated. What does it do to him? It's more than biology. It's more than biology. Hallelujah. And then another mystery is even how the rain falls. Hallelujah. That vapor rises without the eyes of man seeing condenses in the atmosphere purest form by itself distills itself and begins to empty itself upon the earth mysteries that surround our world and the bible says man was made of these elements meaning if you corrupt any of these elements it will translate into the corruption of man are you getting what i'm saying you now see the reason why demonic spirits use these five elements for their operation satan is called the prince of the power of what that's we is that true we see the holy spirit manifesting as the wind we see the holy spirit manifesting as water we see the holy spirit manifesting as light or fire now I, i'm just helping you to appreciate the fact that it's not just that we we stumbled across these things and we found them being used in scripture they are in they are not the only elements are you following me now it is only because they are the elements that are important for the existence and the functionality of man there are many other elements but we know those five just like we have five senses is that true but those are not the only senses now i know that people have taught great men like papa hagin and the rest they've written books and they've said we also have spiritual five spiritual senses of course you can look at the level 
and the, the, the dispensation with which he wrote those revelations. But now we know better. It cannot be that there are five senses. There are senses as infinite as the wisdom of God. That's why you can receive certain communications of the spirit that you cannot explain physically because the, the equivalent sense to help you interpret it is deficient. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God made man to interact with these things. So when I drink water, when I walk with the earth, when I take advantage of the illumination from light, right? And I, 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 I walk with these elements. They sustain my health. They sustain my vitality. And they help me to function in the earth. And it so happens that these elements, because they were imported from the spirit, when the Holy Ghost begins to function with this man, Adam, he also comes in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he can manifest as light or fire. When he manifests as fire, it's a revelation of his dimension to be able to achieve certain things. When he manifests as wind or sound, he says that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was coming, a mighty sound, a rushing wind. Right? And so we see these operations of the spirit. The prophet said, O oh wind, breathe upon this slain. And the Bible says the wind came and entered them. And suddenly, the flesh, the sinews that came, came from the earth. It, I will cause sinews to come and cover the bones. Are you following me now? And so the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in the similitude of these elements. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will still use these five elements to concoct everything because he's working with man. Is that true? When you go, I've, I've, I've taught us already, but then let me just share it. The principle of reflection, we call it, that everything in creation should reflect its maker. Is that true? And because man is the hallmark of God's creation, everything in creation should be reflected in man. Is that true? And so I told you that the eyes of man was made from what? Water. Right? The similitude of vision. The same way that you go to a herbalist and it does incantations on water and suddenly that water becomes an eye and he starts seeing through it. Right? I told you that the hair of man was made in the similitude of grass. Is that true? That's why you can barb it and everything, you know, that similitude. The veins of man were made in the similitude of roots of plants. Is that true? The bones of man was made in the similitude of stones. That's why they can stay long even after, just like the stones. Are you getting what I'm saying? The body of man, this flesh was made from the earth. That's why it is compatible with the earth. When men die, where do we bury them? Not in the sky. We don't just hang them somewhere in the sky. Is that true? We bury them. He said, for thus thou art and to dust thou shalt return. Is that true? That means you are dust. So when the Holy Spirit begins to function, he functions in these dimensions. Watch this. Notice the coexistence of wind, light, water, and all of this to keep you alive. Can you choose water and say there's no need for light? Is that true? You need all of these dimensions. Now, that's how it is spiritually. Every season, because rea realize that God is building another spiritual man. Is that true? He says, we all as living stones. There is a spiritual house God is attempting to build. And the name of that house, when completed, is called the bride of Christ. In her perfection. God is walking molding he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed in you like an architect trying to build a mystery using the bride to make a bride that bride that is spotless and so based on that creation god is using us and forming every element that needs to be in us so that as a church we can be presented as that apostolic 
Are you following me tonight? So the Holy Spirit reveals himself in different dimensions after the similitude of these elements of creation. And every one of his dimensions comes to initiate an understanding about God and to initiate a certain kind of function. Just like water. Water does not just do what light does. Water does not just do what wind does. But without wind, water cannot move. Is that true? That's, there, there is a coexistence. When I began to seek the Lord this year for the prophetic word, he said, I will reveal myself to my people as the rain. The rain. Not just water, the rain. That caught my attention. For me, I was very, very excited. Very, very excited because I know a bit about water. And I, I have studied a bit. But when the Lord began to give me that word, I braced up. I was excited. I received it into my spirit. And very briefly, I will just share with you certain things that will help us to align with the prophetic word of God. Hosea chapter 6, please. From verse 1 to 3. Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3. I want us to read it together. One to read. And he shall come to us as how? Hold on. He said, and he shall come to us. Meaning this is how he has chosen to reveal himself. To make himself manifest in the midst of his people. Not a rain. He says, and he shall come to us as the rain. A combination of the former rain and the latter rain. Now I don't want to go into the whole theology of the arguments about former rain, um, latter rain and all of that, that's not our point of interest tonight. But it's just for us to know that God wants to come and manifest himself this year, 2015, as the rain. The rain. The rain. What then is this rain? Very quickly. What is the rain, really? I wrote a few things here and I'll just read them out so that we can have some notes. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Spirit. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people and territories that is responsible for activating certain spiritual realities. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. upon people and upon territories responsible for activating certain spiritual realities there are different spiritual realities because every dimension of the holy spirit helps you to access certain dimensions hallelujah when the holy spirit is revealed as fire there is a dimension of him that we can access on the strength of that revelation when he's revealed as rain or water or dew or whatever it is in that similitude when the holy spirit is revealed as oil when he's revealed as a dove when he's revealed as all of these things they all attempt to communicate certain dimensions of his operation and dimensions that can be accessible hallelujah there are seven seven dimensions or expectations I want us to have as the Holy Spirit reveals himself as the rain. Seven things happen in the life of any man and any territory when the Holy Spirit is permitted to reveal himself as the rain. We'll just run through it very quickly. Number one, when the Holy Spirit reveals himself to a people as the rain, 
there is an unusual dimension of soul winning unusual dimension of soul winning because harvest is tied to rain harvest is tied to rain hmm. harvest is always tied to rain he said in Isaiah chapter 32 from verse 15 he says until the spirit be poured upon us so he uses the language of the rain until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then that vine will multiply and become a forest so one of the things that happens to a people or a territory when the Holy Ghost begins to manifest as the rain is that there are unusual dimensions of soul winning and transformation. Transformation. We had our brother who came here and shared how that he had never seen me. I don't know how, how probably without exaggeration, thousands of people who say, I have never seen you. Most people outside of this circle have seen me in either dreams or visions. You see that? The rain. Unusual dimension of soul winning. And so that's one of the things we expect to see this year. That there will be unusual dimensions. That rain will pour on people. You see, when the rain begins to pour, it does not select who to fall on. Is that true? When it falls, it falls upon everyone and you must carry a trace of it. It will wet anybody. It will wet any car. That's the dimension of the spirit. So he will fall on unusual people. He will fall on business people. He will fall on students. He will fall on workers, unbelievers. Had, you will see hardened criminals come to Christ. People who vowed by themselves, God forbid, over my dead body to be born again. You will see them come mysteriously. And then you will know that the rain fell on them. Hallelujah. People who hid at all have refused to accept Jesus Christ. You will argue with them. They will say, look, if, if Jesus is real, why are pastors this? You know, all those, all those arguments they bring. You will see them walk in dimensions. I tell you, you three o'clock, you will see them come to stand at Koinonia. Shaking, they cannot explain what brought them. The moment you see that, know that it is the rain. Because every time a rain will fall, you will see clouds. There is a sign. There is a rain. And that rain will fall. It will bring... I'm not talking of salvation of one leg here today and two legs out. You say, I had it. No, 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 no. Genuine that all your legs will be stationed and established in the kingdom. That's why I said so winning and transformation. You know, I've questioned a lot of what people call born again. Right? If you truly meet with this rain, there must be transformation. Hallelujah. All of those kinds of what I used to do before, I'm still doing it again after 10 years. I'm, you did not meet with the Holy Spirit. If you truly meet with the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the living... A donkey met with him and started talking. No rehearsals. Look, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost meets with you, something must change. He has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. There is an imprint. When rain comes, it does not ask you what kind of material. You live and there is an evidence. Have you seen rain come and then there is a nice lady who is wearing, um, what they call it, those you people's dangerous shoes that, that is pointed, you know, and she's trying to just run. The rain is whipping her. No regard for whatever she, whether it's with one or your natural hair or whatever hair, whether rain just comes lord send that avalanche we are tired of discussing with certain family members that will not change in this season of the rain mm. the moment he's kicking the car the car will not kick again and the only he can't open the door and he will hear a voice and he will say how long will you keep running away from me personal salvation genuine personal salvation i want you to believe look let me tell you there are seven things this is number one but this is major every one of us must participate cooperating with this rain because 
when when rain falls there are certain people who can how many of you have seen rain fall and then some people bend their zinc strategically to make sure that water enters some vessels that's how some of us will be you will say this rain is almost reaching my uncle oh lord where is that zinc you must tilt it to touch him oh no look let me tell you there will be massive salvation this year it's called anakazo a compelling evangelism not not too much of drama and they're asking you did you quote it correctly do you know that that means you are not a serious believer and then what would have been is a simple encounter becomes three hours of foolish argument the bible calls it vain talk right you keep arguing whether is this and that should this person do this does your church do this when the rain comes when the rain comes some of you all you will need to tell somebody is come jesus looked at them and said come no argument that's how they got up because that rain comes with it a dimension of the spirit do you believe that number two when the rain comes we will experience increased dimension of love for god and passion for spiritual things listen to me every time rainy season comes it supplies energy upon the farmer to go to the farm is that true when he sees the rain he's excited when the rain falls every one of us every one of us must fall in love with god it comes it's a dimension of the holy spirit that all of a sudden makes jesus become a priority in your life so it's not just the issue of being fanatical he emphasizes the priority of the things of the kingdom the house of god evangelism prayer your your passion for spiritual things come alive Jesus must become a priority in our lives this year. Not an option. Many of us love the Lord, but there are many distractions. Jesus is not a priority to many of us. But this year, this season of the rain. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Let me tell you one of the things that the rain does. The rain washes away filth. There are many things that have covered our eyes and our lives that will stop. Some of us love God, but there is a devil seated on our face called our mouth that will not allow us to serve God well. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your spirit wants to serve God, but your mouth, this mouth is, is, is an empire, is Babylon seated on your face. And if you don't tame it, let the rain wash away that thing, that feel. There are many of us, our lives, this is the year when you say, Lord, let this rain come. Passion. During my retreat, I said, Lord, I really want to love you. I don't want to fake it. I know that I love you. You know, people send me a text and say, may God give me one tenth of your love for God. I said, really? You've not seen anything yet. Madly in love. For some of you, may God give you the kind of love you have for women. May God convert it to be love for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 2015, may it happen. No, we're here to enforce it tonight. Because, see, the way many of us love things that are not God. Money. Reputation. Women, men, intellect. Now, I'm not against all of those things, but I am telling you, remember, part of the things we do here is to make sure we strangle every idol to death. There is only one that deserves our praise. We will lay down our idols and thrones we have made. And all that has taken my heart, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you.
one strategy of the devil one strategy of the devil to, to filter or draw away our love and passion for God is activities say activities that was the strategy Pharaoh used when Moses was coming to connect them back to God Pharaoh said ah it's because you are free I've not occupied you enough that's why you even have time to consider an exodus he said occupy them what I was giving them free, let them look for it. And that's one thing that the devil is using to destroy our generation. Ask an average young man, why are you busy like this? Four o'clock, you are awake. Sorry, I don't have time. Ba -ba -ba -ba, Lord, I thank you. You are, I mean, if you were not alive, I wouldn't have woken up. Now that I'm awake, I really thank you. And you're on your way moving. We are on the go. We have fast food. If you are hungry, enter quickly. Five minutes, you are out. This kind of life, will never produce passionate people. There must come a time in your life where you must define who is worth your time. Ha! You've won my heart, oh God. You've won my heart. Don't let Nigeria fool you. You are not the first to be successful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ask Abraham. Ask Isaac. Ask Solomon. These were men who pursued God. But with that pursuit, they were successful. Take away that useless theology that the devil has given Nigerians. That if you don't get up and hustle and push, if one door closes, force another one to open. What do we call it? Hustling. In this year of the rain, may God help you to know what matters. You have only 24 hours. Have you heard what I'm saying? I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all I want is you. There are many of us, we don't care about the house of God. The, the house of God, come for koinonia, eh, oh yeah, let me just drag myself and come, you know. And you come and you are waiting for everybody to tell you thank you. This is the year. You tell that devil, if you, if you took advantage of my life in 2014, in this year, I mean business with God. Hallelujah. This is the year to throw away that small jotter that fire has burned half of it and buy a good hardcover exercise book and say, Lord, I mean business. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. It says, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up this was my cry during the retreat I said Lord I don't love you enough I searched my life to find out all the things that are still in the remaining time and I said Lord I will give you time more because intimacy is a function of time it's not just about quoting koinonia intimacy is highly time dependent for the more I know you the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Spend time. In this season of the rain, many of you, let me tell you, you will find out 4 o'clock, 4.30, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Hmm. Sleep goes away. No matter the tiredness, you know that is the season of the rain. And you get up and play worship songs. I want more of you. Some of you, this season of the rain will take you back to what you used to do that brought grace upon your life. That you have thrown away. There are some of us here, especially the ladies, you know what you used to do. When it was not the issue of men. Huh? When it was not the issue of beauty. Before you rediscovered yourself, that depth of passion of us don't wake up in the morning again you sleep by eight o'clock you wake up by nine o'clock spiritual carelessness you don't care you don't pray for two weeks it's none of your business you check the way you drop your note on your bible last koinonia friday that's how you pick it next koinonia just say lord i thank you speak to me look it must change in the name of jesus 
Let there be passion. Passion. Some of us were lied to our roommates. Right now, they are the ones advising you. Huh? Look at how spiritual drought came and stole your fervency. But no more. I said no more. In this season of the rain. Ah, cold. It's too cold. I can't serve God. Or the trouser I wanted to wear is not there. I wore blue last week. Blue this week. I can't go for koinonia. You are not serious. When this rain pours on you, you will pick up that trouser and wear. And say, whether, whether it's blue or black, I want more of you. Priorities that will change. Your priorities must change. You went to make your hair. They made half. They've not made the other half. Carry cap and cover it. Come for God. See, ask people and know the silly reasons why they refuse to come to the house of God. Very silly reasons. Someone say, I don't have transport. But let the guy say, oh yeah, come, let's talk. You, you, there is energy. Or, well, or the lady says, okay, I'm waiting for you at 90s. See the guy say I'm coming. When he was talking, he was around dark, but you will be walking. Lord, I receive strength. I cover ground. And you cannot come to the house of God. In this year, 2015, may God give us passion. Oh, let, let this rain come. And let people see the difference between them and God in your life. Are you getting my point? Let the guy know you love him, but when he comes to God, he is truly secondary, without apology. What if you put anything and God? Don't even ask me which one. Anything that is not God has lost, including myself. If I'm secondary to God, what makes you think you will be primary? more of you more of you more of you Jesus more sing more of you more of you sing more of you sing more of you It's called an awakening. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Please, you need to talk to your neighbor. Say, wake up this year. Reignite your passion for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down, five minutes prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you. No, 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 no. You have to give God time. You have to give God time. Say, I will give God time. He will become a priority in my life. Yes. Nothing else matters. Look, let me tell you something. I was talking with my auntie. She lost her, her son, eldest son. The one who would, you know, be the next of kin. And when I went to her, um, when she heard I was in ministry, in her mind she said, ah, this young man, According to her, said this young man, so intelligent. You mean that's what you really want to do with your life? You know, people make it look like, ah, you mean this is it? Now, but when her son died, when I went to her, she said, if I knew, I would have served God like you in the days of my youth. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Whether you believe in immortality or not, we are not going to be here forever. Just settle that in your mind. Is that true? Jesus said, I must walk the walks of him. Five minutes without breathing, nobody will ask you all the PhDs you got. Are you aware of that? Nobody will ask you what your CGPA was. Please, let me remind you. Nobody will ask you whether you, you got married or not. As important as these things are, if you have not sat down to think about them, I want you to know that there is only one thing that will matter at the end of your life. We used to sing a song, 
um, when I was in secondary school, one Anglican song only remembered for what we have done. You know the song? Very powerful song. So, by and large, hear me, if you keep distracting yourself and not giving God time, everything that you are giving time for now, will it secure your eternity? That's the question. You are giving your whole life to a man, yet you cannot give God. A man you cannot trust. A man who can come and say, I've changed my mind. Kai, I've changed my mind. A, a, a lady who can come and say, you know, the only constant thing in life is change. Yet you say, I give you my all. You even say it happily. Please don't laugh. I came with the fire from my retreat. Make sure you are not just laughing carelessly. I'm communicating something very serious. Passion. That you must not come for koinonia for people to see the passion. People will look at Morgan and say, what is this? This fire you have. Why is it just God all the way? God in lecture theater, God everywhere. Are you this fanatical? Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, listen, if you are ashamed of me, I've seen people die, brothers and sisters. I've had the privilege to to, to go and minister to bereaved families. I've prayed for people in hospitals. I have seen in my little life the vanity of life. That's not to make you not to get up, but I know that I plan to spend my life on what matters. That at the end of my life, when I stand before him, let me carry mantles of souls and say, Lord, I spent my life I spent my life to the last serving you. One general that we honor forever, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who cheated death left and right, front and back. There are men who have cheated death. This year, please let there be an awakening. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. For some of us, it is to return to your first love. Ha! Huh. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire. Lord, don't let my life go cold. Let me not be busy doing ministry and forget my relationship with God. Let me not be busy doing ministry, ministering, traveling around, and everybody is shouting, Apostle Joshua Selman, whereas my personal intimacy with God is faulty. See, let me tell you, men can clap for you, but this is the year you say, Lord, I want to be genuine. I'm tired of pretense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm tired of people looking at me like a Christian, thinking that I love God, walking based on yesterday's anointing, yesterday's oil, walking based on the applause of yesterday, whereas my today is faulty. Number three, when the rain falls, it brings unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. This is one of the things that we are going to be experiencing in this year of the rain. Unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Please media you help us. We have to really be fast. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture. Malakata. Deuteronomy 32. Mambroski, brother, Shilaba. Okay, let's just watch. Okay. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. Read together. How? My doctrine, my mysteries. I will give you certain revelations and it will come 
in the similitude of the rain. It will, it will be an avalanche. It will come in abundance. Hallelujah. My secrets, my mysteries will come upon you as the rain. No matter how the drizzle is, if you channel it well, it can fill buckets. He says, my doctrine shall drop. He said, my speech shall distill as the dew. High. Abundance. Some of you will open Genesis and you'll be reading Genesis for months because you will see things there that you never saw. And God said, that will be the revelation you'll be exploring for two weeks. And God said, a sound planet that it moves with words and God said my doctrine my mysteries will fall upon koinonia like rain ah. so that you will begin to see the puzzles joined together that these are the keys these are the operations of the spirit that activate certain dimension of kingdom realities Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Bible says it has been given unto us to know. The word know is the word intercourse. The same word like a man knowing his wife. It has been given unto us to intercourse. That's the word epignosis. A state where you know a thing by becoming that thing. Not just by hearing about it. It's an operation that only exists in the spirit. So in the spirit, if I want to know how this speaker is, I will have a feeling of becoming it. Accurate knowledge. My doctrine shall come upon you like the dew. So that many things we have believed that are confusing us and stopping us from experiencing the reality of God. When there is an avalanche of access to the mysteries of God, some of you will begin to find out what is responsible for the tragedies and the operation of darkness in our families and you will know what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do this year may you know what to do because in the kingdom we arise and we shine when light comes we reign upon the strength of light not when your light is available when it comes when it comes he said they that have sat in darkness have seen a great light a great light a great light a great light Daniel chapter 2 verse 19 there is a God that can show men mysteries there is a God we are going to contend for mysteries we'll look at verse 19, 22 and 47 long story a king had a dream and forgot it and said if you don't tell me what this dream is and the interpretation I will kill you very simple Hallelujah. The king had a dream and he forgot it. And he gathered all the soothsayers and wise men and said, I don't know what you will do. Go and invoke whatever you can invoke. But if you don't tell me this dream, I guarantee you, you will die. And the Bible says, Daniel asked for time. He said, give me time. Everybody say time. Hmm. You don't want revelation. God is not Mr. Biggs or Chicken Republic. He said, Lord, as I'm going, just let it come. I, I didn't have time to prepare. Now that I'm going for the meeting, let it just drop as I'm coming. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. It takes time. Daniel told the king, he said, I can tell you what I need time because it's in the place of intimacy that you experience that rain. And he said, then was what? The secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. In the night, while men were snoring and sleeping, the rain came. And when it came, he said, Daniel, this is it. Sit down, you're about to watch a movie. And he saw Nebuchadnezzar sleeping. And he saw what happened. Verse 22. This was Daniel acknowledging God. He said he revealed what? The deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And the and light dwelleth with him. Brothers and sisters, may God show us the things that are hidden in darkness. That have been responsible for the stagnation of our lives and our families. As this rain falls, let, let it expose things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, let's just leave verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible makes us to understand that the Holy Spirit is able to access the mind of God. Have you read that scripture? That the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the things that are in the mind of God. Right? Scripture makes us to understand that no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. And the spirit of God has access to the mind of God and is able to reveal it to us. He said, but God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit that will manifest himself as the rain. He said, for the spirit searched all things. Yea, the deep things. May God grant unto us uncommon revelation in this year of the rain. Number what now? Number four. When the rain falls, one of the things that we experience is multiplied dimensions of spiritual power and the anointing. Multiplied dimensions of spiritual power. When you plant a seed and bury it, the moment the rain falls, that seed begins to push above the earth against gravity. And it comes out. Spiritual power. A Christianity that does not demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit is child's play. There is only one language that is understood in the realm of the spirit and is a language of power. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, I was watching the, a, a, a lovely cartoon yesterday. I don't watch most of, uh, I don't have time self to even watch cartoons. But one caught my attention. Pharaoh Moses in Egypt and I mean it was it was it was well animated I was so touched better than many of the things we have watched before I mean very 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 nice and very graphic when Moses got there there was no room for long stories the rods were speaking this is the year by the grace of God where there will be a demonstration of the power of the spirit this is a place of power there must be miracles upon miracles breakthrough upon breakthrough we must it must be evident that the rain is falling if you believe that say amen in the name of jesus christ resulting to an outbreak of miracles signs wonders breakthroughs healings it's impossible to have the holy spirit reveal himself as the rain and will not have healings and miracles and it will start this night this night not next week this very night hallelujah some of you 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 carry the atmosphere of this rain and step into places and you see the sick get healed look we need to restore the church to the signs that characterize that God is at work and at alive in people. We trivialize the place of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of arguments in the body of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, this place will become a habitation of not just his presence, but his power. Let the sick come and be healed. Let the oppressed come and be delivered. Not, not long stories. There are many things in our lives that do, doesn't require counseling. We need a head-on collision with the power of God. And it solves the problem once and for all. Some diseases will die a natural death when they meet the power of God. He said the yoke shall be destroyed, not by oratory. He said because of the anointing. When the rain falls upon us, there will be levels of grace. When God was showing me little visions of things that will happen, in the year and I saw some of the things I said my goodness oh Lord do these things let nothing restrict you look brothers and sisters you will see a demonstration of the power of the spirit this year that will shock you not just from here not just from my life from your own life from your own life your hands will do mighty things look at your hands and say this year you will do mighty things Please, I want you to believe it. Look at your hands and say, this year, you carry an unusual unction and you will do mighty things. So we'll see multiplied dimensions of grace, multiplied dimensions of miracles, signs, wonders, 
manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next point. When the wind, when the, the rain of the Spirit falls upon us. Now take note of what I'm about to share. It will bring unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity, and abundance. For sure. Rain. Now, agriculturally speaking, rain is tied to abundance and fruitfulness. Is that true? And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me again and again, very notably, that will happen in the lives of people is an avalanche of prosperity. I know that many of us have had these things again and again, but please, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Absolutely. Joel chapter 2, please. For time's sake, we'll just look at verse 24 and 26. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It says, And ye shall eat in what? Plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that I dealt wondrously with you, and my people, in terms of finances, shall never be ashamed. Do you believe that? God is going to change the stories of people. Look, it will be, the Bible says, when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion, for many of us, it will be like a dream. People will look at you without the assistance of any uncle or auntie. You will rise. It will be a mystery. God will use you to prove that the rain has fallen upon your land. Genesis chapter 2. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5. Listen, it says. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. He said, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. When you read the verse before it, it says how that there was no vegetation. Why? Because the rain had not come. When the rain falls, fruitfulness begins immediately, immediately. There is a relationship between that dimension of the spirit and your prosperity. And I want you to believe it. I have prayed this into my own life. I have received it. I believed it with all my heart. This year, I will not argue with the word of God. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. Leviticus 26 from verse 4. I'm giving us this scripture. Let's hurry up and we'll pray. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. It says, then I will give you rain. When? And this is the season. The Lord has spoken to us. He said, I will give you rain in due season. And what will be the result? And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May that happen for somebody. Brothers and sisters, I have learned in my little life that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Joseph slept in one night as a servant, as a slave, a property of Egypt. He woke up the next day as the man in command. That would be somebody's story. When the gentleman shared about his UK, um, you know, um, the blessings of the Lord. In my mind, I said, that is a drop. We are talking of an ocean an ocean of the, the avalanche of what God will do. Men will look at you and say, whose head did you cut? You will say, no. No. It's the rain. It's the rain. Do you believe this? Or has your suffering of the past blinded you and say, it's like that. It came like that. Do you not believe that God is able to make a table in the wilderness. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? 
Hitibu. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. Just look at that and then we'll touch on the remaining. I have to run. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. I just want to give us scriptures. I want you to read if you believe. One to read, everyone. What will be the result? It didn't say your neighbor's corn. There is, there is a, listen, there is an apportioning for you. Listen, this year is not the time you sit down and clap for others and say, you mean God did it for you? Hallelujah. You must insist. Please believe. If you've never believed God for anything, why don't you connect and believe this year? He said that thou mayest gather thy corn. And what? And what? Three things. Your corn, your wine, and your oil. When the rain falls, your corn, plenty, plenty, he will cause you to experience it. What else? Do we expect two more, right? Number six, supernatural restoration. When the rain falls, in Joel chapter two, the coming, the outpouring, the rain and the spirit brought about the restoration. He said, and I will restore to you the years, verse 25 of Joel chapter 2 and I will restore to you the years I will restore to you opportunities I don't care whether it was carelessness I don't care whether it was arm robbery I will restore everybody shout restore, restore. we have come to enforce it the Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore 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 he said turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. For many families here, that the devil has made it look like his Ichabod in this year, when the rain falls, you will see a tree that was dry. You almost want to use it for firewood. God will say, don't cut it. At the scent of water. At the scent. He said there is hope for a tree. Even if it be cut off at the scent of water i'm prophesying to someone here it looks like you are in a, a state in your life some of us think we have messed it up there is no way there is no human way but that's when god is needed if it's still possible for you god will be resting but when it's impossible he will arise and i'm speaking to someone the way god will change your story this year it will shock you god one by one God will restore everything to the latter. Even what you said, God, is not necessary. God will say, no, no, no. I'm too committed. Restoration of joy and peace. Restoration for the days of tears. Restoration. Academic restoration. Financial restoration. Marital and relational restorations. Mm. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, though I fall, yet I will rise. While you are sitting down discussing that I died, Jesus died for only three days. While you are discussing, they say, no, he has risen. You are talking about a man who only died for 72 hours. Some of you, you have been subjects of discussion in your family. They looked at you and said, look at, huh? it's better to even be an idol worshiper. You are mocking God, but this year, my father will arise. You will see God revisiting things that happened 10 years ago and say, I must prove a point. It's not necessary, but they have mocked my name in your life. Do you believe this? I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. God is able to restore. I'd like you to say, God is able to restore. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh There 
there's nothing you can do and there is absolutely nothing absolutely nothing oh lord see wiping your tears in this year of the rain you can't cry forever That will be your song when God changes your story. Let men talk. Don't try to defend yourself. There is a defender, the God of your salvation. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh in my little life that you don't cry forever are you hearing what I'm saying just let the rain fall <laughs> when that rain falls you will see restorations that you cannot account for you can't even explain how it happened Joseph how did you become a prime minister honestly I don't know all I know is that I woke up that morning and by evening I was on a throne. Esther, how did a villager like you become the king's wife? I don't know. I didn't instigate Vashti to look for trouble. All I know is that the rain fell. See, when I say the last point, you will know what I'm saying. This year, there will be the falling of many and the rising of others. Trust me. Many who have made mouth and concluded on others you will see God take people that you mocked and sat down and they will rule you, you <laughs> be careful as you speak over people because brothers and sisters there are others who have even said God take my life and God said are you joking wait and see how I, I, I will write my name upon your life and any man that sees you will know that God is able to restore me he says, Son of man, can these bones live again? Can these bones live again? He said, Only thou knowest. Only thou knowest. The rain will fall and things will change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing that the coming of the rain will do is that the rain brings judgment upon people and territories who oppose God's agenda. Oh yes, there will be a rain. I told you that there will be the falling of many and the rising of many. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Let's hurry up. After that we'll look at chapter 19 verse 24. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. It says... For yet seven days I will cause you to do what? To rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made I will destroy off from the face of the earth. So the rain does not just come to bless. There is a dimension of the rain that brings judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it, when it was time to judge the world, it was water. Rain came and caused judgment. There are people who have sat down and believed that they hold the destinies of people in their hands. This year, they will receive of that rain, for sure. For sure, that rain will come. Listen, two things happened when it began to rain in Noah's days. It was killing all the people who were laughing at Noah. And said, Noah, for how many years? Noah, we were young, oh. We were young. Those days when you were 70 years, you were a teenager. They say, well, we are teenagers. We're... Now, 120 years, you are still building an ark. Noah said, I know. 120 years ago, he told me rain will fall and it will still happen. And when it was time, God said, Noah, enter your ark. I will close the door by myself. When he closed the door, he said, rain, you are free to come. 
while the rain was killing others it was lifting another man's ark same rain are you seeing that now the rain was drowning noisemakers and those who have laughed at what god can do but it lifted the ark of noah and kept it on a mountain called mount ararat hallelujah that rain many of you will hear this year that the evil doers that have refused they, they are 95 years old they say we won't die we are sitting to see how you will get married when that rain falls are you hearing what i'm saying see there are men who have exchanged their life for others is that true in this year of the rain god will bring to justice i tell you is is there is no prayer of mercy it's called a written judgment it's a judgment that has been stamped and it must be executed hallelujah the rain bringing judgment two scriptures you can just write it quickly genesis chapter 19 from verse 24 and exodus chapter 9 verse 23 genesis 19 24 exodus 9 23 you don't have to project it but all of these things talk about rain one time the egyptians made noise against god rain came rain of hailstones brimstones it came and landed upon all of them there will be rain this year in this country nigeria there will be rain i saw it in visions there are people you see bragging today they will not see august this year I'm telling no 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 it's, it's the truth they will die not just they will die shameful deaths God will sign upon their death that I did it the same way terrorists take responsibility they say we are the ones that removed that head David removed the head of Goliath and lifted it up I'm the one who did it God will do certain things and leave his signature and say I did it hallelujah before we quickly pray what does it take to experience the rain we've told us what will happen what the rain brings what does it take to experience the rain very quickly number one genuine hunger for more of God you want to experience the Holy Spirit as the rain this year it's not just as a prophetic word isaiah 44 verse 3 very quickly genuine hunger for more of god that rain will only flow to those who are hungry those who are thirsty those who are serious with god he said for i will pour water upon who him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground in that similitude I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. You must be hungry. You must be desirous for more of God. You must be desirous. That's what it takes. You must have genuine hunger. Number two, you must have a determination to see his kingdom come. The rain does not just come for nothing. The purpose of the rain is for the harvest. The purpose of the rain is to introduce a new season. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come across lives, across territories. That means if the priorities of the kingdom are not an important thing, you don't need the rain. Why do you need the rain? If you do not have a determination to see his kingdom come. So you must be determined that this year, my partnership koinonia my partnership with god to see his kingdom come will be uncompromised number three what does it take to experience the rain prayer say prayer heartfelt continual prayer zechariah chapter 10 please verse 1 heartfelt prayers you want to see the rain you must pray it. You pray down the rain. Zechariah. Chapter 10. Zechariah 10 verse 1. We have it. Everybody read. One, two, read. 
Stop. He said, do what? Ask. Don't wish. He said, the moment you sense the season has come, start asking. Ask ye of who? The Lord. The owner. The owner. Ask him and say, Lord, this is the season. Let the rain come. He said, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So shall the Lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Listen, listen. We are going to ask because he said we should ask. This is the season of the rain. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. He said, ask for the rain. Zaria is our territory, it's our jurisdiction. Hallelujah. We must pray and say, Lord, give us the keys of this city. Give it to us. In this season of the rain, we ask for the rain. Massive salvation. Massive prosperity. Massive signs and wonders. A demonstration of the spirit that will make us walk like gods upon this city. Hallelujah. More grace. Fresh anointing upon the messages. Fresh anointing upon the people increase of all sorts numerically spiritually all these things are the things that come with the rain testimonies and miracles for people that in this year the barren will take their children that in this year many people's situation will change these are the things that happen when the rain comes hallelujah james let's look at an example of one person who prayed and the rain came james chapter 5 please Oh, I already feel the anointing of the Spirit. Oh my goodness. James. James chapter 5. We'll read verse 16. And 18. There's no need reading verse 17. He said, Confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. Let's read the second clause. Are you ready? One to read. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. And let's see an example. Verse 18. He said, And he prayed again. He had prayed. And the heavens were shut and there was no rain. And when it was now time for the rain to come, what happened? He went back and the Bible says he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And as a result, the earth brought forth her fruit. So we are going to be praying. He said, ask ye rain. Ask ye rain. Whenever you see clouds forming, it tells you rain wants to come. That's why he began to pray. And he told the servant, go and check. The servant said nothing. He said, I will still pray. But when he saw clouds forming, he said, that is it. That is it. Pray. And the heavens gave rain. Financial rain. Spiritual rain. All kinds of things. We are going to see the hand of God in a very mighty way. God is going to lift us and exalt us in ways that will honor him. God is going to make a spectacle out of us. And the goal of this first meeting tonight is to bring us into agreement. Because you must agree. That's the purpose of this little exhortation. To bring us to a point where you say, Lord, that is it. I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it for my life. I refuse to argue. It's my season. Not koinonia season. It's my season of the rain my season of not a rain the rain i have exact expectations we're going to be praying and you're going to be telling the lord as far as 
it depends on me i'm ready to play my own role just supply the grace and i tell you for many of you january will not end because he said he will bring that rain in the first month beginning from the first month many of us will begin to see things happen it's 16 days and and it does not take time when rain comes it's an avalanche it may take time to see the formation but if the cloud be full of rain except they are not full he said they empty themselves upon the earth hallelujah and so we trust god that he will reveal himself there will be such an outpouring upon the campus there will be outpourings of the spirit outpourings everywhere that from this place like 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 infernos of fire it will shoot to territories one of my one of my goals this year is that all of the external ministrations that god will grant me grace i want to take this rain to those territories hallelujah my focus this year is to take this rain to territories there are people that must catch this rain Hallelujah. I will be a dispenser of this rain. A dispenser of this rain. That you step into a place and you cause bright clouds to be open. And rain, rain just comes upon people. Unlimited breakthroughs. I told God, I said, I'm, I'm more than ready. I am I'm more committed to this work like never before. We're having our retreats tomorrow. The leaders and the workers in the house and part of the many things we are going to be discussing is how to refire ourselves to position ourselves first to receive of this rain and to be dispensers of this rain hallelujah praise the lord and so the lord is going to grant us grace we are going to do three things very quickly before we conclude this service number one is we are going to pray and I want everybody to participate inside and outside. I know that there are some of you, there's no space all around. Don't worry. Find a corner and pray. This is about your life. We are going to be praying. All of the seven expectations become your expectations for the year. We'll pray it. And we'll pray for grace. That dimension of the spirit to be able to play our own part. Hallelujah. And after that, I believe that God is going to release upon us the supply of his spirit to ignite this grace. It's an anointing service. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord for this word. Give him thanks. Give him thanks everywhere, inside and outside. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your prophetic word. It's my season of the rain and outpouring of the dimension of the Spirit upon my life. I thank you. Hallelujah. your voice and pray lord i receive it i receive it it's not just a word for koinonia i receive it Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. 
Hallelujah. Pick up your notebooks. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray all those seven expectations. If you can help us, media, fine. If it's down, no problem. Hallelujah. Those seven expectations from massive salvation of souls, one by one, salvation of, of souls, increased love and hunger for God, access to mysteries, multiplied spiritual power, dimensions of wealth, restoration, judgment. One by one, you're going to personalize it for yourself, for your family. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Let the rain bring salvation. Let the rain bring transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we travel around the regions of this nation, as we travel even beyond the borders of this nation, thank you, salvation, the rain, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit. Lord, this year, 
we will do mighty things. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. Our miracle services will be characterized by a demonstration of the power, a demonstration of the light and the glory of God. Greater unction in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, we pray for a new dimension of financial prosperity, a new dimension of wealth and abundance upon my life, upon your house, upon Koinonia. We step into fresh levels. We tap into the mystery of divine supplies. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family. I pray for every Koinonia member. They are stepping into abundance. 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 Lord, you will restore. You will restore. Restore destinies. Restore opportunities. Restore anointing. Restore mantles. Restore visions. Restore dreams. Restore graces. Let there be restoration. Don't be tired. Pray. So take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Lord, we demand a restoration of all the years that the Kanka worm has eaten, the Palma worm. We command a reversal of opportunities that have been lost. We declare judgment, judgment, the rain will bring judgment upon evil doers, judgment upon wicked men, judgment. Hallelujah. The seventh thing we say that will happen is that God will bring judgment. Hear me. There are men who have tied down the counsel of God over families. There are powers, there are forces that tie down the destinies of men. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Still on that point. The Lord, as the rain falls, these powers, these forces, we command judgment. They must crumble because I must rise this year. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a believer. Oh yes, the forces of darkness, ancestral forces, covenant, yokes of bondage. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Therefore, we put him back on the ground of the substitutionary sacrifice. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 
Now before we cry for a supply of grace as we start the year, I'd like you to mention one thing that you know you need this rain to do in your life. Hallelujah. There are many things and we have prayed about some of them. But for adventure, there are expectations that many of us have. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I make a demand. This is the season of the rain. This and that must happen in my life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. Everywhere outside, make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That rain must fall. Hallelujah. But there are conditions. I'm about to pray for you. Hallelujah. You cannot do spiritual things with your strength. You need a supply of the spirit. Hallelujah. And as we begin this year, freshness. There are many of us who must start the year on a good note. I know that for most of us here, we have been having different kinds of programs, fastings, personal fastings, some Ah, I sense the rain, my goodness. I hear the sound of physical rain in my ears. Physical rain. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. Something will come upon you. This is how to start the year. Supply of grace. No laziness. That supply of grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please, as I pray for you. Lift your hands as I pray for you, inside and outside. I want to pray for you, for it takes His grace. It takes that supply of the Spirit to help you align to the conditions that will make the Holy Spirit reveal Himself as a rain. You have asked, but you have your part to play. And we have to pray. Lift your hands as I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray that in a mighty way you will come upon your people. You told us that you will come to us as the rain. As the rain. And right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as I pray let that rain in strange dimensions and in strange proportions begin to fall on people at the count of three one two three let the rain fall right now shake it take it take it let the rain fall inside and outside inside and outside my goodness let showers of rain lord let showers of rain don't just stand watching people fall. Pray and say, Lord, I receive. Let the showers of rain fall upon everyone. The grace to pray and keep asking. The grace. We receive it, oh Lord. Fresh passion. Fresh fire. The dew of heaven. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep the hands lifted up. Some of you will feel physical rain. Physical rain coming on you. Physical rain. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that those who need the refreshing, 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 the refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain, let it wash away every failure of 2014. The refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain. The refreshing of the rain in the name of Jesus the refreshing of the rain I command it I declare it the refreshing of the rain it comes upon you inside and outside the refreshing of the rain hallelujah now one last thing I'll do and then I'll prophesy and we're done listen lift your hands please receive this this will come heavy upon us the lord began to tell to me about this right from retreat there is a grace that you need to run this year with there's no time for me to begin to tell us some of the things that the lord revealed to me but now is the time there is a grace upon this house for everyone that is connected to run with it and it's time to release it i received it in the secret place just lift your hands Father, you told me to stretch my hands and you will release that grace as you showed me in the secret place. Right now I release. I stand in my office and I command, take the grace for 2015. Take the grace for 2015. Take the grace, the supply of the spirit, the supply of the spirit. I, re I release it. As I received in the secret place, I release it for your academics, for your ministry, for your business. Take the grace inside and outside for your family. I release it. I activate that supply. I activate that supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands as I prophesy into your life for the year very quickly just. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that this year 2015 shall be for you a year of supernatural ease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that brings ease. The grace that brings ease. I release it to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication in 2015, let it fall upon your life now. Grace to pray. Grace to pray. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I declare that from January to December, every month becomes for you a fruitful month. In the name of Jesus. This year, they will not be going up and coming down. Your part will be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, the dimension of favor that has been earmarked for you and for this house to walk in we receive it and I release it to your life right now financial favor marital favor hallelujah I prophesy upon your life and upon this house every sinner every soul that must be saved through your hands this year let the rain supply grace to bring in that harvest in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you struggled with in 2014 I declare that in this year you will not even need to fight you will hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you hallelujah I pray for everyone's finances in this year 2015 may the Lord do something in our lives 
that will cause our mouths to open with laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, we prophesy supernatural marriages this year. We prophesy supernatural childbirth this year. We prophesy supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare upon you, although it's a year of election, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I place a seal of exemption. You do not live by the sword and so you will not die by the sword. No one here connected to this ministry, Kapata Labada, will be a victim of bomb blast, will be a victim of terrorists. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that as you travel all through this year, by air, on the road, you are protected. In the name of Jesus Christ, accident is far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is the year when we forbid you from begging. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be the one to bless many. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your academics this year. Step into an unusual dimension of mental acumen. This is the year you will record five points. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my goodness. This is the year first class students will arise. Many of you will come with the spirit of Elijah and you will beat the standards you have set before. Hallelujah. I pray for you. This year, your hunger for God from January till December, nothing will kill that hunger. The same way you are excited about God, that's how you'll be excited the last koinonia service. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That said, if your God is alive, let him prove himself. I'm prophesying to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the mighty one of Israel will arise and speak for you this year. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands. Wave it to Jesus and give him thanks. Now keep standing. Very quickly, there are people here inside and outside. You've never made Jesus Lord of your life. This is a good time to start. Probably someone invited you. Maybe you're a new student. Maybe you're new in this city. Maybe you just came visiting. Or you've given your life to Christ at one time. But you have not committed yourself to be serious with spiritual things. And you're saying, man of God, this year, I mean business with him. Those two categories of people, please find your way to the front right now. Right now, wherever you are, inside and outside. Don't wait for anybody to come. Rush and come to the front and I'll be ready to pray with you. Very quickly, those who are saying, this year, I mean business with the Lord. Please come and stand here. Celebrate them. They are coming. They are coming. The devil is a liar. Not after this prayer. Outside, I believe that there are many people. Leave your seat and come. It's called Koinonia. The place of intimacy. The place of encounter. You're saying, Lord, I want to start afresh with you. I'm tired of pretending I mean business with you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. No matter how far you are outside, there is still room for you in front. Make your way very quickly to the front. Hallelujah. Take everything that is of God very seriously this year. Praise the Lord. Those of you in front, lift your hands as I lead you to pray. You are not reciting a poem. You have to believe in your heart for your confession to make sense. For your confession to be able to bring you salvation. So say after me, Lord Jesus, I truly believe in you. I make you the Lord of my life. I believe you died for me and you rose again for my justification. I confess your lordship and I receive your life into my spirit. 
I declare from today that I'm a child of God. From today that I leave the past and I contend for the future. I declare that every lifestyle and every habit that has tied me down this year I make a fresh start in the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, there is no one who comes to you that you will cast away. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that these salvations will be genuine and these commitments will be genuine. I curse every power. Right now I curse every spirit. There are some of you here, there are powers that are tying you down. And stopping you from making progress. I command that they leave you now. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. Thank you so much for making this decision. Now I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just see the gentlemen waving their hands there. Just at our back. I'd like you to follow them. They will have your details. Welcome you more warmly. And give you some instructions. Koinonia celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we take the announcements, can you help me celebrate Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan? These guys are so busy now, so having them around to start off the year with us is a great blessing. Thank you guys. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, before we end, or come and just speak blessings upon the house. Um, now, all those who are worshiping with us for the first time, what a, what a blessing, what a blessing. And this is to encourage every one of us. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. Make up your mind that this year you will never come for Koinonia alone. Hallelujah. We have prayed you are an evangelist. Hallelujah. You are going to invite... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.